Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to what is actually, believe it or not, I think I'm right in saying that it's our fourth year together, so welcome back. And uh, didn't you have an easy time this month? What an excellent bunch of photos. Well done on everyone, to everyone for uh, producing these photos. Um, it's been a busy time. I know Mo has run you ragged with the... Uh, uh, the challenge he gave you while I was away, um, stormbound or pretending to sail. And, um, well, we've had a lovely summer, haven't we? We've had storms, we've had gales, we've had rain. We had one day of sun and then uh, storms and gales and rain all over again. So, to crack on then with Brenda's image. My little Honda, she's taken the words and she's slightly adapted them. And in order to do that, she's changed it from My Little Ronda to My Little Honda. How wonderful. And to show the smallness, the tininess of this Honda, she's actually put it in a frame, the frame of the thumb and the forefinger of uh, a, a willing volunteer. Well thought of. To try to make this, uh, this this motorbike look s small, look as if it is a toy, and as such, it ticks the box. It does it. It's a frame within a frame, so I'm seeing uh, an image through the hand, and I'm intrigued to look further. So it's really addressing the title. It fades off beautifully to the edges and the corners into a a, uh, a dark. Stri uh, strike um, and uh, outside that we then have this orange one this orange frame which gives a, a, a sort of a dynamic uh, three dimensionality to the image so I like that very much indeed and it's very imaginative uh, to actually put it put the, the motorbike inside the frame of the hand so well done on that one Brenda that's good that's very well done and moving on okay Number two, Brenda, <clears throat> my little Honda, Brenda's second issue. Well, the idea here that Brenda has uh, uh, eschewed, adopted, anyway, taken, is that um, she's trying to propose that this motorbike is a toy motorbike. It's a little Honda, and, uh, it, and it does do exactly that. So it certainly looks like a little Honda. Even more so in Brenda 3, where through some uh, photo manipulation jiggery pokery, uh, she's been able to make the little Honda even smaller against the gearbox uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the big Honda. So it certainly looks like my little Honda. And you know, it does it. It actually ticks the box S I L. It makes the judge laugh. So that's an extra tick on that one. I love the way that Brenda has monochromed it. I don't know which piece of uh, software she's used to monochrome it. But it looks jolly convincing to me. And I do like it. I do like it. It's um, certainly well produced. And uh, is it really a toy against the big one? Or is it somehow photo manipulation? Well, I don't know and I don't care. It just looks jolly good. So well done on that. Nicely stroked. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, we've got uh, two strokes there. Uh, a grey outside the white. And uh, yeah, I like that a lot. Very imaginative. Well done on all those three. All three, uh, Brenda. And I, I will be looking at the suite of three, I think, on this occasion uh, to decide who it is that's going to win the chocolates and uh, it could well be Brenda who knows now what have we got here Diana a little do say coupe 
yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Now, what particularly interests me about this photograph is the way that uh, Diana has focused on the main bonnet of the car, uh, and yet all around it seems to be soft. But if you look through the windscreen, you can look out of the rear screen, the back window, and that's sharp as well. Indicative of the fact that uh, Diana has acquired some very advanced photo manipulation skills here. And that's well done. I like that a lot. Very cleverly produced. And I'm just going to try to change it on my screen so I see the whole thing. Very symmetric. And there's only one item which is out of symmetry. And without that, it would not be such a good photo. And you can see what it is, ladies and gentlemen, can't you? you ask yourself, what is out of of symmetry and the answer is the single windscreen wiper so great well done well post processed lovely image stroked great love it next one from uh, diana uh, the fastest wheels in town and once again diana has demonstrated her advanced skills in photo manipulation jiggery pokery and she somehow swirled the whole thing around. And with the, the wheel being turned, as it, as it appears to me, it does look like this vehicle is actually moving. It's moving along. It's turning a, a sharp left-hand bend. And it's very, very well done. So such photo manipulation jiggery pokery is, of course, an advanced skill. And uh, I would ask you to... Uh, Ask your, your computer to show you how to do this sort of thing, if it will. If you have the software, give it a spin. <laughs> did you see what I did there? Give it a spin. Yeah? Okay. So well done on that one, Diana. And let's go on to number three. Diana, number three. Till the lake pipes roar. And here we are. These are the uh, exhaust pipes uh, from the uh, motorbike. I'm going to guess it's a big armchair on wheels, maybe a Harley Davidson or something like that. And we have these wonderful pipes. You can hear them with me, can't you? Just listen, just listen to the pipes roaring. And it certainly addresses the title. Yeah, great. So what Diana has done here is to take the title of the music, listen to the words, selected just the words that are adoptable, adaptable, can be employed, and she's taken a photo that uh, tells us that. Now, speaking about leading lines, where are you looking? Where does your eye go? Are you coming in at the bottom left-hand corner? You've taken up through those pipes where they divide to become three pipes. Do you end up in the engine block of this, uh, of this vehicle? I hope you do. Leading lines taking us somewhere. In addition to which, it's really, really difficult, and Diana has done it beautifully, to take photos of bright, shiny metal. Now, you know how difficult that was when I gave it to you uh, some months ago. It might even have been years ago now. Um, feels like just yesterday, doesn't it? And we all addressed bright and shiny metal. So, well done, Diana. I like that. I like the colours. I like the negative vignette. Um, what's negative vignette? Well, that fading to the corners and the edges with lightness. It just gives a, uh, an agedness to a photo, I think. It makes it look as if it's a, a historical document. So, well done on that one. Super image. And let's move on. Jeff one. Now, Jeff's actually been magnificent in his efforts this time round, as he always is. Um, and uh, his tune was Breakaway. Breakaway. And sure enough, this, which I think is the old art gallery in, in Southend, um, it does seem that the veranda is breaking away from the rest of the building and is shored up with these wooden uh, planks, these wooden timbers. And Jeff's thought, crumbs, 
That's just what I'm looking for. Excellent, Jeff. Very, very well done. Now, how could we improve it, ladies and gentlemen? If I were to ask someone to suggest what to do to improve it, I'm going to pick someone. Who am I going to pick? Will it be Suzanne? So what would you say, Suzanne? What would you say? I know what you'd say. You'd say, well, that lamppost didn't need to be there. So why don't we crop that out altogether, crop the image at the lamppost. What about the Belisha beacon? Is that part of the photo? Let's crop that out as well. And what does that leave us with? Well, a nearly portrait orientation, uh, remaining part of the photo, which purely ad uh, addresses the, uh, the topic of breakaway. So well done, Jeff. That really is breakaway. Now, the only other thing that I hear Suzanne whispering in my ear... Yes, I can hear you, Suzanne. Speak up. Good. Uh, is that it's a little tiny bit busy. So could Jeff have walked across the pedestrian crossing, got a little bit closer, and shown us some of the breaking away parts of this structure? Maybe yes, maybe no. <clears throat> but well done, Jeff. That's very well seen. I like that a lot. Let's move on. Jeff number two. Remembering that the title is Break Away, and Jeff has found this um, rain downpipe whose bracket has broken away from the wall. Well, I would never have thought to take a picture of that. And well done, Jeff, for doing it. Terrific. It's one of those where, you know, your mum would say, your granny would say, your daughter would say, your wife or husband would say, what on earth are you taking a picture of that? And your answer is, well, because you are a photographer, and that's what photographers do. Well seen, well taken. Thanks, Jeff. Good man. Well, Jeff, you know, you've got two ticks in the boxes out of the three of them so far. And here, for your third image, what have you found to take a picture of but a chocolate bar called a breakaway? You imaginative guy, you really are. That's very well thought of indeed. I must say, I didn't even know there was a chocolate bar called Breakaway. But there again, um, maybe somebody else does. Or certainly you do. Maybe somebody suggested it to you. Was it your grandson? Did he say to you, Granddad, there's a chocolate bar called Breakaway. If I eat half of it, you can photograph it. Can I then eat the other half? I'll put a pound to a penny. That's what happened. Well done, well seen, very imaginative. Thanks, Jeff. Now we have one of Moe's renditions. And I know he found it really, really easy to address this, uh, this uh, song title. And the words he's taken are, and then I kissed her. Straight from the song, and then I kissed her. So we have this uh, bearded gentleman kissing the statue <laughs> and that ticks the box of making the judge laugh yeah she seems to have a, a noose around her neck <clears throat> i guess she's in a garden center uh, and the gentleman is de definitely uh about to kiss her so it addresses very well the title in the music now what criticisms are we going to make about this well should we pick someone Shall we pick uh, Diana? What would you say about this? Whisper a little bit louder. Yes, I can hear you. You're saying that the man's face is a little bit dull, whereas the background of the uh, foliage and the plants and the flowers is a little bit bright. One of the things Mo has to learn, yes, we will tell him, is that the brightest part of an image is often the strongest part so how would we have recommended Mo to have altered this photo well the answer is a flash gun maybe on half power maybe on quarter power maybe on lots of different powers and try taking 35 or 36 images at different settings now if you change your aperture it will allow more or less light in during the time that the shutter is open. If, on the other hand, 
you change your shutter speed, it will let more or less light in from the surroundings. Now ask yourself, what changes could Mo have made? And I would suggest to him, if he was sitting here listening to me, sitting alongside me, I'd say, experiment with a, a low power flash gun. First of all, get the exposure correct on the man's face and on the statue. And at different shutter speeds, so as to reduce the amount of ambient light coming in from the background. That's got the potential of being a very powerful photo. So, Mo, you've got homework. You know what your homework is, don't you? I'm going to tell you now. Go back, do it again, get your flash gun out, control your flash gun, put your camera into manual mode, try lots of different shutter speeds, still with the flash, allowing more or less light in, controlling the amount of light that's getting in, from the background, the ambient light. Quite a good photo, lots and lots of uh, mileage and lots of learning to do from that. Well produced, good stroke, nicely composed. Thanks, Mo. Mo's, uh, start again. Mo's uh, second photo. And then I asked her if she wanted to dance. And we have this um, somewhat green lady. Why she's green, I don't know. But she is dancing, and Mo wants to dance with her. Well, that's absolutely wonderful. Look at where the lady is positioned in the image on the third on the left. He asked her if she wanted to dance. And the image addresses the title beautifully. I'm, I'm quite impressed with that one. I'm not sure if I can enlarge it. Um, yes, I can. <clears throat> and she's definitely she's definitely green, and I don't know why. Oh, is she one of these jolly green giants? But she's a woman, and isn't the jolly green giant her oh, mat eye? What do I know? Who knows? Why is she green? I don't know. You will see that there's a, a slight, as it were, movement in her right arm on the left side as we look at it. Uh, and that's good, I like that. It's showing me that she's actually moving. Looks like she's in a dance class from the spread out characters in the background and maybe there's a, a, a lamp, a lantern of some description uh, up above. Um, or was the white balance incorrectly set on the camera? Now, you must check your white balance, and I would suggest to you that the 99 out of 100 times uh, the correct white balance can be achieved by putting your camera onto automatic white balance. This, I think, would have restored the, uh, the flesh tones of this lady, because at present she looks like a bit of a Martian. So here we are. Mo likes dancing with Martians. I'm sorry if the lady's hearing this, but there we go. Never mind. Um... There's a, an extraordinary sort of stroke appearing around the image with a, a mid-grey line at the bottom, a darker grey line offset on the right and a slightly wider uh, and middle grey, middle mid-grey, is there any such thing? Well, there is now, uh, at the top. And there might even be a dark grey on the left-hand side. Now, this is... Uh, an advanced piece of photo manipulation, jiggery-pokery, which I'm sure Mo will tell us about at some time. I do not know how he's achieved that, and it doesn't matter what matters to me that he's tried. So well done, Mo. Pat on the head for photographing a green lady and uh, stroking in an interesting way the photograph uh, that you've taken. So well done on that one. Mo number three. One day I'll meet her mum and dad, and there we are. So the the music has exactly those words in it, and we have the picture of these uh, this elderly couple, um, probably in their 40s, <laughs> uh, and um, uh, they're very well taken. Whether they are on the same photo or not is another matter. Whether they've been cut out and pasted on a black background 
it doesn't matter. Um, there's the mum and the dad. And so you can just imagine how this photo addresses the words in the tune. One day I'll meet her mum and dad. And they're looking askance. Are you good enough? Are you good enough for our daughter? Well, maybe. Look at the, the photo itself. It's a wonderful photo, characterful picture of the, this elderly couple. <clears throat> the only improvement I would say is that we really need a catch light in the eyes. Just a very, very weak flash. Maybe point the flash <clears throat> away or straight up. Um, and just get a catch light in the eye to give three-dimensionality. Beautifully stroked in uh, uniform grey all the way around, so that's good. I, I wonder what... Um, oh, I don't seem to have a stroke on the on the bottom of the image, do I? Yes, I do. Change the magnification on my computer. Beautifully taken, well photographed, well composed, and it's a, it's a sideboard photo, isn't it? Well done on that one. And it certainly addresses the... the uh, the title. So, <clears throat> for Mo, he's he's ticked three boxes. He's got uh, three sets of words and uh, from from the tune, and he's addressed them. So, well done on that one. Suzanne, oh Suzanne, do I know where you took this? Yes, I do. What a super picture. What a dynamic picture. And what does it say in the title? Dance, dance, dance. And there are three ladies, and they are dancing. Now, on my screen, it doesn't actually appear terribly sharp. Um, <clears throat> it's described as being on the edge of sharpness. That may be because of the way it's gone through the Internet and ended up on my computer. And it may be that by the time Mo constructs the, uh, uh, the PowerPoint... It'll be perfectly sharp. How should Suzanne have set her camera to take a picture, a photograph, of these three luscious, ample ladies in their belly dancing? And my word, do they have a belly to be proud of, each of them? Well, super duper. So, come on then, <clears throat> let's pick someone. We'll pick a volunteer to speak up and tell me how Suzanne should have set her camera. And I'm going to pick Iris. And I can just hear you saying it. Speak up, Iris. Yes, you're right. High shutter speed. Now, I wonder, have we got any EXIF data? No, we haven't. Oh, dear. <clears throat> if only we had some EXIF data, we could see the shutter speed that Suzanne has taken. And I feel confident that she has set her camera in shutter speed priority she's de deliberately chosen a shutter speed and we have to ask was it fast enough have you actually frozen the action of these women or have you deliberately chosen a sh slow shutter speed so as to somehow swirl the movement to uh, give us some some dynamism in the in the image well maybe you did and maybe you didn't so We'll ask you. Come on then, Suzanne, what did you do? Speak up. Okay. <clears throat> so Suzanne won. Dance, dance, dance. Certainly addresses the uh, the task, and it's well taken. Good stroke. <clears throat> the stroke is important for um, digital projection uh, of your image if you were to put this into a um, an outside competition. But ours are not really competitions, ours are, just, ours are just learning experiences, and I know that this addresses the title very well indeed. Let's move on to Suzanne too. Well, what a riot of colour. What a super image. And we'll get back to Iris's suggestion. What was the shutter speed? Well, in this case, it is clear to you, ladies and gentlemen, that Suzanne has set a slow shutter speed slow enough that the movement of the what would you say those are uh, silks as the lady swirls them around and I'm doing it while I speak to you I'm swirling my silks Mo will tell you and that movement is contained within the image very very thoughtfully done well seen well taken you know what I'm going to say next however 
we've got one of these cursed people in a uh, high-vis jacket in the frame. Now, that really dominates the image. And that's a shame, really, because that's such a well-seen image. I love the way that the lady herself is nearly sharp and that the people in the background are blurred into softness. I wonder how much uh, photo manipulation, jiggery-pokery you've, you've employed there. Perhaps there is just a little, and well done to you for doing it. I love it. Compositionally, where should the lady be? I hear you say, on the third. Which third? On the right-hand side. Where should her head be? On the third, a third of the way down from the top. And if only we didn't have the curse of the lady in the high-vis jacket, that would have made a cracking good image. As it is, it's a cracking good attempt at dance, dance, dance. So that's Suzanne's second image addressing the same title. And I, I like that idea. That's very good indeed. Well done, Suzanne. Let's have a look at number three. And once again, dance, dance, dance. So you've addressed the same title on all three images. Tick in the box. Well done. And you've decided again to position this lady with some, some movement. She's an amply provided for lady and she's demonstrating that to all of us. As she swirls around in what I'm going to guess is a, a Spanish dance. Um, a suitably chosen background or is there a little bit of photo manipulation in there? I don't know. I can't see. Uh, but it does mean we've only, we're only attracted, we're only looking at the, the woman, and that's very good indeed. It's quite hard, ladies and gentlemen, to take photos of black objects. Do you know what? I could give you that as a task, couldn't I? Oh, gosh. Well, I won't. Not this month. Um, but we might do in the future. Um, here we have movement, dynamism, dance, dance, dance. Well-taken photo. Look at the stroke. It's a, a, a mid-grey. Beautifully done. I like the image a lot. Once again, it just seems to be either on the edge of sharpness or a slightly slower shutter speed than might have been chosen to freeze the lady's actions. Now, I know you took lots, <clears throat> and I'm sure that this is a, uh, one of the best ones, and uh, thank you for submitting it. Well positioned, well taken and certainly interprets the title rather well. Terry number one. In the morning I just lie in bed, and here we have this... Now, is this a real person? <laughs> no, I think not. It looks like a, uh, a dummy. Is it a dummy? Can't be a real person, can it? With a rather super camera alongside him. One of those folding uh, cameras which... I remember my old dad had one of those. And this this soldier is on his uh, army issue bed with the um, <laughs> the potty underneath, uh, the camera on the table, and what looks like a dead cat on the end of the uh, bed there. Um, so we're back to dead cats again. All right. Well, I guess it's a staged photo in a museum somewhere, um, and it certainly addresses the topic of... In the morning, I just lie in bed. Absolutely addresses that title. Well done. Well exposed, Terry. Uh, I wonder where it is. Perhaps you'll tell me later. And, uh, yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, brightest part is the window. With the lights coming through those dreadful curtains. I uh, hope they're not your curtains. Well, if they are, I apologise now. Um, and uh, that old sprung bed. Yes, I remember those. Um yeah, well seen, well thought of, and simply putting uh, uh, putting a photo to the words. We've got some EXIF data. Um, what is it giving us? A hundredth of a second at 6.3. Interesting. Taken on a Nikon. Very good. Okay. Um, I wonder, ladies and gentlemen, what you would say about methods of improving this photo. What do we? What does Terry want us to look at? Does he want us to look at the brightest item? the window with the light coming through? Or does he want us to look at the camera or the, or the gentleman? And I would suggest perhaps uh, we are um, led to believe that the thing to look at is the gentleman or the dummy, as it may be, 
uh, lying in the bed. And I'm wondering whether just a little bit of a vignette um, to, to bring our attention on to that gentleman may be an improvement. Um, well done, well taken, and uh, a super interpretation on the title. Um, a slightly different uh, use of the words in the theme, she was going to be my wife, and here we have uh, a little bride-to-be badge and a, a good luck token of the bells and, and, the, uh, and the heartbreak of the, the ticket that's been torn in half of the wedding day. She was going to be my wife. There you are. And um, there's a story. S-I-L. Remember S-I-L? Who remembers S-I-L? Let me pick on someone. Diana! What does S-I-L mean? S, you've got it. It's the story, isn't it? It's the story. And there's a story in this photo. It goes with the title. It's very well thought of. Very well uh, presented. A very thin stroke, just the right size. If you're putting any images in to DPI, make sure you have a stroke on them. It, do it does just separate the image from the backdrop. Um, if titles are required, make sure the title helps the judge to know what to look for in the story in this case. And there is a story. She was going to be my bride but the ticket's been torn. Something's happened. So I like that a lot. Yeah, well done, Terry. Next one. We're going on to Brian. Uh, and then I kissed her. Well, this is the same title as Mo used. And I, I'm, uh, we don't have a label on this particular statuette. Um, and you know, I've said to you before that if you take the photo a photo of somebody else's artwork. You have to do something uh, to it yourself. And what has Brian done? He's actually put some blackberries in the, uh, in the hands of this, this, little statuette's, uh, this little statuette's hands. And that's lovely. He's done something to change it. It's not just a photo of somebody else's artwork. The background is suitably soft. And whether he's cut it out or whether that's the way he took it, I don't know. But it works well. If we were to ask how could we improve it, would there be perhaps a movement uh, somewhere that we could actually move the statue to so it's not quite so central? But well done for adding something to it. I have in the past suggested a Coke can or a left stiletto heel or uh, anything at all, a scarf around her neck, perhaps in this case, and then I kissed her. And it certainly does address the title. So well done on that. Well done, Brian. Well thought of, well seen, and well produced. Roger one, I get around. And just to prove it, we've got this concatenation of images from all over the world. We've got what looks like China or the Far East. We've got some Rome. We've got some fairyland castle somewhere. We've got a waterfall. We've got a bit of a, a cliff and a beach. Oh, great. I get around. What a good idea. Terrific. I'm very impressed with the imagination that you've given to that one. Um, yeah, great. I wonder how you did this. Did you compose them on the computer from your backlog of uh, uh, your back catalogue, as it were? Um, oh, I think it's really very thoughtfully done. Yeah, good. It's given me an idea. Yeah, I won't share the idea with you yet, but I might do in the future. I get around. Certainly addresses the 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 title. I love it. Oh, I've just seen Australia, Sydney. I've seen. St. Peter's Square, is it? I've seen what looks like New Zealand. Uh, South America. Wow. Yeah, okay, S-I-L. What's the I? Come on, Roger, what's the I? Intrigue, interest, you're drawing me in. 
I'm looking at some Aborigines. I'm looking at Ayers Rock. Oh, the Great Wall of China. What looks like an observation tower in Canada. Or Wow, great. Super photo. Thanks for that. Love it. Roger number two, I get around. And just to prove it, here we are, a whole bunch of you 3A members at a table enjoying a glass of something refreshing. Great. Love it. I get around. It's around the table. There are people around the table. And uh, I, I think it really does address the title rather well. I get around. Terrific. Thanks, Roger. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for those. I'm really impressed with uh, how imaginative you've been. Uh, some people said to me, come, this is too easy. We can do it on one afternoon. Uh, and other people have really uh, bent over backwards to challenge me. Now, it's quite clear when I look at these how I'm going to mark these, how am I going to award the chocolates and hopefully not leave the chocolates in the pub this time round. Um, I think because you've given me three from a music title, I'd like to look for those which, of which all three address the probably the same title, though to be fair, <coughs> some people have taken... Uh, words, different words from the same tune. And that's good. I'm happy with that. <clears throat> and we have to look at <clears throat> three <clears throat> pardon me, which address the title which you have taken as your challenge. Well, it's quite easy. It's quite simple. Uh, looking at them, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind. And thank you for submitting them. And well done to everyone. So the winner, yes, it's clear, the winner is.